birthdays and anniversaries. I got two, two of the prettiest people I know have birthdays. Megan Duncan, as I said, to, hey, and an anniversary. <laughs> Henry and Sandra were in St. Louis on December the 7th and, uh, and I called him and Henry said this is our anniversary and I said um, as Roosevelt said a day that will live in infamy so one year these are my two babies right here this is Heather and Megan and you got you're losing you're missing one Kenny Nelson has a birthday, looking good. Debbie and Johnny have an anniversary. Anybody else? Tell me. All right, let's sing the birthday to these three young'uns. Happy birthday. And then John will be here, looky here. All right, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Only one day, not you. Poor Nick. Henry and Sonda, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Good to see all of you. If you're visiting with us for the very first time, if you've never been with us before, would you just slip your hand up? Our ushers have a visitor's card to give you. and Just hold it up. We have one here and a gift bag to give to you. If you'll please fill that out and put it in the offering bag as it comes by in just a few moments. Any others visiting for the very first time? Very first time. Just hold your hand up and fill that out. We want to welcome you this morning. want to uh, say to you right off, we do have a lunch prepared today, free of charge for you. If you'll stay with us right after the service, uh, our folks will be over there. They have to pay, but you're visiting and you don't. So uh, please stay with us. We'd love to meet you and get to know you a little bit better. And it's good to see all of you uh, here this morning. Let's stand together. Let's get a songbook, and Ron's going to lead us in a number this morning. Page 408, everybody knows joy to the world including the band. Those Christmas songs are tough, and I have to rehearse with them, and, and they say, oh, no. So Joy to the World is pretty straightforward. Page 408, good to see you. Had a great time last night. Rocky and Kathy uh, uh, had this, um, oh, what do they call it? Young at Heart. Young at Heart. We really had a good time, and a lot of laughter and a lot of good food. Thank you. Good to see you here. Good to be in the Lord's house. Some, a lot of our winter visitors are coming down. So we're thanking God for that. Are you happy? How many of you have this? Just a few. Are you still really, really, really happy? A yes. little better, a little better. Sing with all your heart and praise the Lord in song. What about joy in your heart? The world doesn't give joy. The world doesn't take it away. Praise God. It comes from the Lord. Here we go. Singing now. Oh, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive. Sounded pretty. Let every heart prepare him. Sing for our as the curse is found, far as the curse is 
the last now. Oh, he rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteous as wonders of his love and said and pretty and wonders and wonders of what about this sing this little song turn around and shake hands with those round about you silent night She had a surgery, and uh, uh, she really stands in need of our prayers today. So if you would please lift her up uh, this morning uh, as we go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Tom, would you pray for us?
Good to see you. Good to be in the Lord's house. A good looking bunch here. Yes. Good to see Linda. <laughs> Ain't it good? Yes. When we gather yes. together, you know we miss these are brothers and sisters and we miss them when they're gone. Right. Good to see Don. Amen. We're faulty people. Are you faulty? You look real good right now, but if I'm around you very long or even Monday morning. Monday morning. <laughs> But he loves us even with our faults. He looked beyond my fault. This is an old Rambo. Man, I'm telling you, I've been listening to that. Betty, Betty Witt gave me a, a CD of the old Rambo stuff. And it's a beautiful old song. Listen as we try to sing it. singing one of his. As a matter of fact, I think they're, they're the best songs I ever Amen. heard. They're the best songs. Rank right up here with Amazing Grace. Give me an E flat. Our Savior was traveling one day into Galilee and Samaria. He was on his way. He met ten of us who were lame with leprosy. We were crying out to Jesus, begging for mercy. He said, go show yourself under the priest. And on our way, we were all here instantly. And as I looked upon my skin, it now was clean. And what he had done for me That's when my journey with the other nine Bless God Did it end Oh, you see I had to go back 
where I'd met that great physician. I ran to him and fell down at his feet. And I said, Lord, there's something I must say to thee. Oh, I said, Lord, I just want to thank you for all the blessings you have poured so bountifully on me. Oh, Lord, you heard my feeble cry. You gave me back my life. I am so unworthy. And now I praise your holy Same. My life has been made new For all the things you've done for me I'll praise your name continually Oh, from the bottom of my heart, Lord, I, I thank you. you When I think of all the joy you brought my way And how your mercy to me are new each and every day and how as an eight-year-old you Praise saved my soul you kept your promise Praise to me God. oh and you blessed me with health and strength and a christian family oh like that leper man who worshiped at your feet lord there's something else that i must say So good, right by my side you've stood, you've met my every need, you took my place on Calvary, you shed your blood for me, and your grace has seen me through. Bottom of my heart, Lord, I thank you. And for all the things you've done for me, I'll thank praise your name continually. From the bottom of my heart, Lord, I thank you. How about Miss Cadence? Are you here, sweetheart? <laughs> this is this is the continuation of our bunch right here and we start them young and by George they can sing too do you know that this is Kate well I'm thankful to be a Christian praise the Lord praise his holy name and he's been so good to me and I, as I looked over everybody and those that's been sick that are here and I praise God for his blessings and uh, you know I was getting groceries a few groceries the other evening and uh, they find me. Homeless people find me. They do. Well, that's, that's what God told me years ago, to help the brokenhearted, those that are cast down. I praise God. I'm thankful. And uh, he was a young man, and he was 24. And, uh, of course, I always ask him if they've been saved. I got him some food. And he said, yes. And I said, well, tell me when you were saved. He yeah. said, when I was nine. He said, at my pastor's. Uh, but he was baptized in the pool, and and uh, I said, "Well, you, why are you homeless?" And he said, "Well, I'm out of work." And and he said, uh, mm -hmm. "I said, where's your family?" He said, "My mother died, and uh, everything so going on like that." And so anyway, and I thought, Lord, you know, now I pray for him. His name's Clayton. Maybe y'all want to pray. He's 24 <laughs> years old, and. And uh, so I took his hand and prayed for him, and oh, he just squeezed my hand. I don't know, my heart just broke, because I thought, Lord, if I hadn't been in a, raised in a godly home, that could be me. That could be me, and that could be my, ch I think of my boys, always. Not that they're 24 anymore, but 
I always think, <laughs> but I always think of my sons, and I, I told him, I said, uh, I have two sons that are preachers, and oh, this is a good one. He said, do they really appreciate you? <laughs> No, I said, afraid not. he said, do they, afraid not. do they appreciate what they have? Well, he didn't have a mother now. And uh, I said, yes, I think so. And anyway, I just thought, God, I've, I say this so many times. I've never went to bed hungry. I've never went to sleep without a bed, blankets, warmth, cool when I want to be cool, two cars in the driveway, food, food abundantly. And I just praise God. I praise him. My heart just gets overwhelmed for what he's done for me and he wants to do for you. And you do not give up on your children. I don't care if they're not saved. You don't give up praying. I remember a woman saying she prayed 20 years for her husband to be saved. It doesn't matter. As long as I had breath, I would pray for my family. And I just thank him and praise him for our church and for the love that's here and for my family, and I just feel like I've been blessed abundantly, not just with family, but friends over the years, and I love him today, and I'm thankful at five years old, he saved my soul. He's one person that'll never leave you or forsake you, praise God. I thank him for all of his blessings, and I love him with all my heart. Amen. Get to hear this young and sing. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. All right, Ronnie. They were singing up there in the choir about the blood of the precious lamb. About that time I felt the power, I looked over and I saw her hand. It was my dear old sweet mother from the pew she stepped out. With a voice like no other, you should have heard her shout. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for setting me free. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for We would sit down beside the fire. Dad would pull out his old guitar. We'd sing songs that would inspire. They'd reach down and touch the heart. Then with tears slowly falling, Mom would lift her hands up high. To the Lord she was calling, and you should have heard her cry. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for setting me free. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for my Setting me free. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for Mount Calvary. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for my family. I thank you, Lord, for saving me. This time of year brings back so many memories What would take place in our household every year on Christmas Eve Before the gifts would be passed out to all the family Dad would open up his Bible from Luke chapter 2 he'd read Of how in the town of Bethlehem A virgin bore a son 
And with tears streaming down his cheeks, Dad would remind everyone. He'd say the greatest gift that I was ever given wasn't wrapped in Christmas paper or underneath a Christmas tree. He was wrapped in swaddling clothes. I found him lying in a manger. He was the only begotten Son sent from heaven to me. Two thousand years ago there stood another it held no Christmas lights or ornaments, oh, but it's still so dear to me. Upon it hung the one who had been born in Bethlehem. You see that baby in the manger became my sacrificial lamb. His death upon the cross displayed the greatest love man's ever seen and if you've been born again I'm sure that you would say with me that the greatest gift that I was ever given wasn't wrapped in Christmas paper or underneath a Christmas tree he was wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. He was the only begotten Son sent from heaven to me. To think the King of glory came to earth to dwell with men is a fact this feeble mind can fully comprehend the greatest gift that I was ever given he wasn't wrapped in Christmas paper or underneath a Christmas tree he was wrapped in swaddling clothes I found him lying in a And from heaven to me, he is the only begotten Son sent from heaven to me. The greatest gift that I was ever given. me to introduce our speaker for this morning. Amen. Don't really know what his name is, but he looks like he can preach. <laughs> but no, I, I appreciate that. You know, I was just thinking what a, what a great life the Lord's blessed us with. It really has. It really has. To, uh, to be able to be here our whole lives. And, um, you know, what the Lord's done and m before mom and dad and now dad's at a point in his life, he and mom can come and go as they want and they can preach when they want and not when they want and and I appreciate what the church has done for him. Yes. So yes. Uh, I want to soak it all in. Amen. Soak it all in. Yes. So you pray for him as he comes to preach this morning. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, oh, praise that Lord. Praise that Lord. Well, I was in Sunday school and... Uh, looking through my Bible, and I have some precious things, and I guess I just saved them over the years. And I ran on to this one. I come out of the house one day and uh, saw a sign on the, the driver's side of my truck. 
And this is what it said. From Bo. Bo. <laughs> That's my grandson. Amen. Paul, I'm so, so sorry that I broke your mirror. <laughs> Why are you your mirror on your car? I will pay you five dollars <laughs> on the back of this paper. And that's from Bo. Yeah. Somebody asked me, said, did you get mad? I said, Lord, I cried. <laughs> that's what I did. Yeah. Thank the Lord. And that mirror cost about $150. <laughs> the brother Daryl helped me out yeah. on that. But I tell you, I, and there's a lot of memories as I look at this uh, congregation and, and think back to 40, 40 years and I basically have told this same little story, but I'll tell it the Lord willing again today. And God's been good and I, I praise him for his blessings. Now there'll be a time and I won't be here to tell about Wally. So I'm going to tell these preachers, you learn that story. Yeah. Bless God and tell it. <laughs> That's a good one. Let's stand together. Boy, I feel good. That's, that's what I want. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Luke chapter 19, we'll read verses 29 through 40. Got a call early this morning. Sister Barbara Blackman called me. And she's in the hospital. And her voice is weak. And she said, I'll be praying for you. I've been praying for you. And I thank God for people that pray. All right. Luke 19, again, verse 29. They came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethany in Bethany. And the mountain called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering ye shall find a cold tide, whereon yet never man sat, and loose him, and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, Why do ye loose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, Because the Lord hath need of him. And they that were sent went their way, and found even us. He had said unto them, And as they were loosened the coat, and the owners thereof said unto them, Why loose you the coat? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. Yeah. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the coat, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes yeah. in the way. When he was come nigh, even now the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. Saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and earth in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude sent unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their faith, praise God, the stone would immediately cry out. Praise God. If the Lord would help me, I'd like to attempt to preach on why Jesus rode a donkey. <laughs> why Jesus rode a donkey in the Jerusalem. Let's pray. God, thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your love. And God, we thank you for these many years that we've been privileged to worship. And, and some are here, and many are gone. Yeah. God, we pray for those that are in the hospital. And let them feel your presence, dear God. We pray you'd bless your word. Give us strength. Dear God, we know that the body's weak. And the spirit strong. Bless God in your work. 
May the lost be saved. May we uplift the name of Jesus. We'll thank and praise you and everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. You can be seated. In the verses that we've read, the Bible tells us about how Jesus sent two of his disciples into a certain village. And he said, there you'll find a little coat tied. Loose it and bring it to me. And if any man asks, quietly loose you the coat, you tell them the Lord has need of it. And they went just like Jesus said. And sure enough, there was that little coat tied. And praise God, they untied it. And, and sure enough, the owner said, why loose you the coat? And they said, the Lord has need of it. And they went and loosed that little coat and heading towards Jerusalem. A great crowd of people had gathered, and they were shouting the praises of God. I never understood why people get so nervous over a little shouting. Praise God. Hey, I, I can shout this morning. Thank God I got something to shout about. Amen. I, my old mom used to shout. And brother, you'd look out and then you'd see if you didn't. Get that head up this morning. Praise God. We got something to shout about. Thank the Lord. And they began to shout the praises of God. They cried, Hosanna. Hosanna, blessed be the king. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Thank God. They were shouting the praises of God. And the old Pharisees didn't like it. They got nervous, and they said, Master, rebuke thy disciples. Oh, Jesus said, no. He said, if they hold their peace, thank God the stones would cry out. Bless God, I don't want any stones crying out for me. Thank God. I want to praise him for his goodness. Thank the Lord. And now, uh, praise God, people are sh shouting their praises. They had palm leaves in their hand and they took their garments off and threw them in the way and put them on the back of that little donkey and bless God, my Savior rode that little donkey into Jerusalem. Now, I, I wondered as I studied this, who were these people that were praising yeah. the Lord? Yeah. And you ever wondered who it might have been we can only speculate, but I like to speculate. Brother, it very well could have been one of these that I'm going to mention. You say, you say you can't prove that. You can't prove that it wasn't him. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I think there might have been a little old boy that's waiting there in the multitude. He's found in John chapter 6. And that little chubby fella is walking around and he'll tug on somebody's coat and say, is Jesus coming yet? <laughs> no, son, just be patient. He'll be here in a little while. You just be patient. And that little fella would walk around and he'd tug on somebody else's garment and say, do you see Jesus yet? No, be patient, little boy. And he'll be by. And praise God, finally, he come riding that little donkey. And the fellow said, son, he's here. Yeah. He's here. And thank God, I just like to imagine that he put that little fellow up on his shoulder. And that little fellow was up there where he could see. And he began to wave those little chubby hands. And say, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And those old Pharisees might have said, Son, what are you shouting about? Just a little old kid. Hey, I've seen some little old kids sing. Praise God, and my heart would be stirred. It was this morning. I've seen them run. I have. I've seen them shout the praise of God. And I, I know that God was in it. Praise God. That little fellow said, I got a lot to shout about. For you see, he might have said, one morning, I heard that Jesus is going to be teaching. And so I said, Mama, 
I want to get down here and praise God. She made me a lunch. Took my lunch box and put five loaves and two feet fishes in it, rubbed it over. And praise God. He said, I went to hear Jesus. Oh, did he teach. In fact, he taught so long. And the people got hungry. And the Lord said, he gave you the need. And they said, Lord, 200 penny worth of bread is not enough that they received just a little of it. And Philip said, thank God. But there's a lad here that has five loaves and two fishes. Well, what are they among so many? Oh, Jesus touched it and prayed over. And that little fellow said, do you know he fed 5,000 men plus women and children? Praise God. And I had 12 basketfuls left over to take home. Amen. That little fellow said, I got something to shout about. Praise God, I got something to shout about. He's fed me down through the years. Praise God. And Susie said, never going hungry. Well, never have, never wanted really for anything, although we was poor considered by many. But praise God, I got something to shout about. Well, I, I believe there might have been that little boy there. And then I thought this. There might have been a woman there standing tall and straight. She found, she found Luke chapter 13. Oh, she's standing tall and straight. And she raises her hands up and says, praise God. And there he is, the one that touched me. Lord, she shouted. And the old Pharisees might have said, now what are you shouting about? Oh, she said, for 18 years, I walked around like this, bound by the devil. That's what it says. Praise God. Bound by the devil. Burdened by sin. Could not even look up. Couldn't even lift herself up. But oh, I met Jesus. Yay. Praise God. And you know what he did? He straightened me out. Praise God. And I've been shouting the praises of God ever since. Thank God he straightened me out. And he straightened you out. Most of you here this morning, we got something to praise him for. Then we might mention another fellow when we sung about Hoy Sung about it this morning. Jesus taught from the mountainside one day. And there was a little fella sitting, I'm sure, off by himself, listening to Jesus teach. And faith coming by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And the Word of God brought faith to her little heart, his heart. And uh, he followed Jesus down from the mount. Now, this was a fellow that had leprosy. He was condemned by the law. Couldn't go into the congregation of Israel. Had to sit by himself. If you pass by him, he had to hold his hand over his mouth and cry unclean, unclean. But praise God. He said, Lord, if thou wills, thou canst make me clean. And that little Jesus said, I will. Yes. Now he put the man, put the I will in the wrong, wrong place. He said, if you will, I, you can make me clean. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. And Jesus said, I will. And thank God, he touched him. And immediately he was made clean. He said, I got something to shout about. Thank God he cleaned me up. And praise God, he did the same for me. Let me tell you something. I don't know how I'm going to get on this message, but I'll shut it down quick as I can. Back in, 
back in September, I was in a meeting in Tennessee, and I told you before, man, we have had some, some more meetings. I mean, unbelievable. But we said, Brother John Potts, he's a fine old fashioned Christian. I'm always having the time. He said, I want to take you preachers out to eat. And then there was four of us that went. And we went to a buffet, and boy, they had all kind of food. And we got our food, and it was, there were so many people there, and there wasn't room to see the men. And so they took us back to the overflow room, and we went back there with our trays of food. And uh, there was a man, a woman, and a little girl in a wheelchair. And uh, we went back there and sat down. Brother John said, Roger, bless the food. Now bless the food. And when I said amen, I heard a little voice saying, amen. <laughs> and I looked back and said, little girl in a wheelchair. And I said, well, thank you for joining in her prayer. Her mother and dad were sitting there. And the mother said, she was born blind. And said, when she was born, she was blind. And uh, the doctor examined her. And the doctor said this to that mother. She said, the best thing you could do would be to take the life support off this little girl and let her die. Yeah. That's awful, folks. Yes. Yes. That is awful. And he said, she'll never, she'll never see, she'll never walk. And he said, she'll never be able to, she would just be a vegetable. Yeah. Why don't you just let her go? Yeah. Oh, she said, no. no. She said, my baby's going to live. She said, and she's going to be a miracle yes. for the Lord. And I'm telling you, everybody at the table dropped their fork and their plate. And we just sat there and cried. You know why? I heard that little voice again. It said, amazing. <laughs> How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found was blind, but now I see. Praise God. Oh, he said she'll be a vegetable. Hey, listen. We better be careful. I, I'm telling you. I've heard women say, it's my body. No, it's not. None of you are Christian, especially. Our body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. And brother, that is a lie, and we'll answer for it. If you have committed abortion or been a part of it, thank God there's an altar here that you come and pray and ask forgiveness yeah. for. And thank God that little mother said, no, my baby will be a miracle. And what that little girl do? There's a miracle. And she sung again. <laughs> Praise God. And I'm telling you, I had such a, what a time we had in the Lord. Pray. Praise God. It was interesting to me to note that all four of the Gospels record this event. And so that tells us that it has to be important. It was Palm Sunday and Jesus is going to Jerusalem. Where a few days later he'll die on the cross of Calvary for our sins. Paul, praise God. He, he loved the preaching. I do too. Galatians six fourteen. Thank God. But God commended his love toward us and that he died. Praise God for, for our sins. Amen. Galatians 2.20. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. 
Thank God when Paul came to the church at Corinth, he said, when I came to you, I came not with excellence, to see of speech, for I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus and him crucified. Praise the Lord. It's still good today. Thank God. I'm like the little girl that was lost in London, and a crowd had gathered around her, and they were, she was crying. They was trying to find out where she lived. And a London Bobby stopped by and offered his assistance. He said he thought he'd name some places she was familiar with. So the London Bobby asked her. He began to identify the different places. He said, sweetheart, he said, do, do you live near the House of Parliament? Have you ever seen the House of Parliament? Oh, and then she shook her head. She said, no, sir. I've never seen the House of Parliament. Well, he said, what about Big Ben? When the huge clock there in London. Have you ever seen Big Ben? She said, no. I've never seen Big Ben before. Oh, he thought about another landmark. He said, what about Sharing Cross? Have you ever seen Sharing Cross, a huge cross down by the cemetery? They said her eyes lit up, tears dried up, and she began to clap her little hands together and a smile crossed her face. And she said, the cross, the cross. If you can get me to the cross, I can find my way home. <laughs> Praise God. The way of the cross still leads home. And we can get them to the cross, Henry. Praise God. They'll, they'll find their way home. Praise the Lord. All right. Why did Jesus ride a donkey into Jerusalem? Praise God. Why did he? Number one, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. In Zechariah 9, 9, the prophet said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, and shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just, and having a salvation, lowly, and riding upon an ass and upon a colt. Some time ago, I heard a TV preacher bragging. And then he said, you can drive an old beat-up car if you want to. But he said, I drive a Rolls Royce. Yeah. Now, wouldn't that be something if I rode up here in a Rolls Royce? <laughs> Amen. Let me tell you, Jesus was poor. Yeah. Don't let them, uh, some of them try to justify their extravagant lifestyle by saying that Jesus was rich. Brother Paul said he was poor and made poor all the time. Thank God Jesus said foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, and the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. I've thought many times one of the greatest preachers in the country used to come here to church in the winter, Calvin Evans. He lived in a double wide, which I've lived in Little old yeah. trailers, that, that's yeah. not the problem. You, but he lived in a, in a double wide. And praise, praise God. I, the one well to do preacher lived in a $3 million mansion. And they lined up to hear him. They lined up to get his prayer clothes. And amen. And by things from it. But praise God, my Savior was poor. You know, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And though he was rich, yet for your sake, he became poor, that I, through his poverty, might be made rich. Thank God. He rode a colt in the Jerusalem. And I've told you before, and I don't have time to tell you again, it'll be different the next time he comes. Praise God. He won't ride a go coat next time. John said, I saw him ride out of heaven with a, on a white ho horse and the armies of heaven, heaven following him. Praise God. He'll come the next time. 
as king. Some 500 years before it took place, Zechariah said Jesus will ride into Jerusalem on a little donkey. Praise God he did. I've heard that prophecy makes up some one third of our Bibles and I'm glad that every prophecy will be fulfilled. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for approach, for uh, in righteousness, thank God. And so the word of God is all scripture given. Second Peter 1 21 said the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Thank the Lord. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Hyman Appleman was a great preacher. He'd been in heaven a long, long time. Hyman Appleman was born and raised in a strict Orthodox Jewish home. When he, one night he went to church and heard the gospel, and he got saved. His father heard about him, and he rode a train to come and see Hyman. And he came there to that town. He said, Hyman, if you forget about this foolishness of being a Christian, you can come home. But he said, if you don't, you can never come home again. Hyman Appleman said, Father, how could I deny the one that saved me? Yeah. Oh, he said, I can never deny it. He said, then you never will come home again. We will consider you as dead. And he watched his father board a train and go back home. And then he said, he heard that they had a funeral for that boy and said they took his clothes out in the yard and burned them. But Hyman Appleman, and they said he held up his Bible and he kissed it. He said that this precious book yes, sir. has been a father and mother to me. In the midnight hour when I was alone, it's rocked my soul to sleep. In the hour of danger, I've pillowed my weary head upon it. Praise God. Praise God. For his word, thank you. Lord, all right. Amen. Uh, why did Jesus ride the dock in the Jerusalem? That the scriptures might be fulfilled. Number two, to show that he was the Lord. To show that he was the Lord. We don't hear much about Christ being Lord. But I'll tell you this today. He's not only my Savior, He's my Lord. Amen. Praise God. All the verses in the Bible tell them about Him being Lord. Romans 10, 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 16, 30, 31. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. All through the Bible, it talks about him as being Lord. Some time ago, there was a controversy among fundamentalists about Jesus being Lord. Many said, you don't have to receive him as Lord. You can receive him just as Savior. Now, I'll say this. There are some that's been saved then he's not Lord of their life. But I, I pick up an old book, thank God, an old Dr. Vance Handler, in one of his sermons, he said this, salvation is not a buffet line where we go through and pick and choose what we want and discard the rest. When we come to God, we come on his terms. Thank God, well, I believe that you have to receive him as Savior and Lord. Thank God. In our text, Jesus told his disciples to find that little donkey. And the man asked, why and lose you? The coat telling the Lord has needed them. Now, three things had to happen if that little coat is going to be redeemed. It, first of all, it had to be redeemed. The coat had to be redeemed. I've had preachers call me, good 
You can say, where is that in the Bible? It's found in Exodus 13 and verse 13. It says this, And every firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with the lamb. And if thou wilt not redeem it, then thou shalt break his neck. Notice that either that little coat has to die or a lamb must die in its place. And I thought that that little donkey couldn't have talked right. That little donkey would have said, I'm here today because a lamb died in my place. Amen. Praise God. The reason I stand here today is because a lamb died in my place. Praise God. Oh, John the Baptist looked out one day and saw him coming down a dusty trail and said, Behold the Lamb, Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Praise the Lord. So that lamb or that coat had to be redeemed. Didn't have to be released. Amen. Jesus said that they would find the coat tied, loose him and bring him to me. Many today have been redeemed, but like Lazarus, they still have some grave clothes on. Yes, they do. Praise God. They need to be set free. It had to be redeemed. It had to be released. It had to be ruled. The Bible says never a man had sat on this coat, which meant that it had not been broken. No doubt this lamb was wild and reckless and stubborn. But it cements to the lordship of Jesus. And now so gentle that the child could ride it. I'm known those right here in this church that were wild and reckless. But praise God, they met Jesus. And he claimed them and he conquered them and he changed them. All right, number three. Jesus rode a donkey into Jerusalem that he might sacrifice himself for us. Down through history, millions of sacrifices were offered. But Jesus was the one in turn sacrifice for sin. In Genesis, you see a lamb for a man. And as Cain and Abel brought their sacrifices to God, their own. Cain was the tiller of the ground, able to keep her sheep. In Gen- Genesis 4, there's a lamb for a man. It gets better. In Exodus 12, there's a lamb for a family. Every family had to have a lamb. It gets better. In Leviticus 16, there's a lamb for a nation. As on the great day of atonement, they had to offer a lamb. Praise God. Come to John 1, 28, 29 rather. It's not a lamb for a man. It's not a lamb for a family. It's not a lamb for a nation. It's a lamb for all the world. Amen. Behold the lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Praise God. He came to sacrifice himself for us. He came to take this thing out of death. In 1 Corinthians 15, 55, Paul cries, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Thank God Jesus took the stinger out of death. You take a bee or a wasp, and if they sting you one time, you don't have to worry about it. They can't sting you again. Praise God. Death may sting this old body, but it'll never sting it again because Jesus died as the first fruits of them that slept. Thank God. In Luke chapter 2, we read of Mary and Joseph. Jesus was 12 years old, and they took him to the Passover. They worshiped God there and presented their sacrifice, I'm sure. And they headed back home. But that accidentally left Jesus behind. They got a day's journey. They missed him. And Lord, they realized they'd left him behind in Jerusalem. They went back and searched for him. Took them three days till they found Jesus. And after three days, they found him there in the temple, sitting in the midst of doctors. And they were all astonished at his understanding and that he's answers. Oh, praise God. That little boy amazed him. <clears throat> they may have asked him, 
Jesus, how old are you? And he might have said, well, on my mother's side, I'm 12 years old. But on my father's side, I'm Alpha and Omega at the beginning and the end. Jesus, where are you from? He might have said, on my mother's side, I was born in Bethlehem. I'll be raised in Nazareth. And on my father's side, before the world was, I am. Thank God the man asked him, Jesus, what were your occupation to me? Well, he might have said, on my mother's side, I'll be a carpenter, Brother Jim. I'll build furniture and houses. But on my father's side, I'm going to build a church at the gates of hell. Shall not prevail against. Thank God. Jesus, what is your plans for the future? Well, on my mother's side, I'm going to an old rugged cross. I'm going to suffer and I'm going to bleed and I'm going to die. But Kenny said on my father's side, I'm getting up from the grave. Praise God for I'm he that lived and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Thank God. The wisdom of Jesus. He came to take the sing out of death. And lastly, he came to save us from our sin. In Matthew 21, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, the crowd cried, Hosanna. Hosanna. The word Hosanna means, oh, save. They were crying, Jesus, save us. Jesus, save us. Only Jesus can save our souls from sin. Praise his name. And so thank God. He came to seek and to save. That which is lost. Well, for 40 years I've told the little story. Wish I could say I'd have 40 more, but I don't know. That won't be possible. But maybe up there I'll tell it. <laughs> thank God. While he was nine years old, he was in the second grade. He should have been in the fourth grade, but he failed two years. And he was just a big old uh, uncoordinated boy. But he was in the second grade. And he was, he was good-natured, and the other kids liked him. And uh, the teachers liked him. One... Uh, year in the winter time it was time to have their annual school play and the teacher got an idea she said you know Wally's never had a part in the play he's slow but she said this year I'm going to give him a part in the play he could be the innkeeper just a few words to learn and he, he's a big boy. He, he will look forceful. She said, Wally, I want you to play the hand keeper. Oh, he was just so excited. And he was at every practice. And he learned these lines. And finally the night came to the little play. Oh, up on the stage there was wise men and shepherds and angels and standing over there behind the door was Wally the innkeeper. Boy, that play moved along until finally it was Wally's time. There was a knock on the door. He went to the door and opened it. In a rough voice, he said, What do you want? Joseph was standing there with Mary. Joseph said, We seek lodging. Oh, he said, There's no room for you in this inn. Wally, or rather Joseph, said, we've been out of place, and we can't find the room. He said, there's no room for you in this end. And so the man, Joseph, said, couldn't you just give us a place in the corner where we could just lay down and rest? My wife is heavy with child. We've come a long ways. And in that Wally there was silence. Boy, the people began to get nervous. While he was standing there, he didn't know what to say. Finally, they began to get nervous, and they prompted him. They said, Wally, 
Tell him no, be gone. Tell him no, be gone. And Wally snapped back the attention. And brother, he finally said, no, be gone. And Joseph and Mary turned around. And she laid her, laid her head on his chest. And they walked off into the darkness. While they stood there, something happened. He forgot it was a play. And as Joseph and Mary walked away, his mouth fell open. His eyes filled with tears. Yes. <laughs> and little Wally the innkeeper said, Joseph, wait a minute. Boy, that wasn't in the play. And they turned around and looked. He said, Joseph, bring Mary back. You can have my room. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. And they said, for a moment, the auditorium broke up with laughter. But just as quickly, the laughter died away. When the people realized that Wally, the boy considered slow by all of the townspeople, had made room for Jesus. Oh, thank God. I want to make room for him. Praise the Lord. I want us to do more. Boy, I saw them. They had baskets out there for the sick. That's wonderful. Praise God. We got a couple here in church that takes care of 10 kids. I told them I want to help. Praise the Lord. I don't need anything. I don't. I mean, I'm not being proud or anything, but I don't need anything. I don't need no candy. And hard to say, but I don't need no money neither. <laughs> I don't. Thank God, pick out somebody that you know that has a need. And buy them something for Christmas. Praise the Lord. Barbara Blackman called me this morning. Bless her heart and she could hardly talk. Hey, I picked her and Granny up on the van 40 years ago. Go. Praise God. Take her a basket. Amen. Make room for Jesus. And the way we can do that is pick out somebody that you know that has a need and rather help them. Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. It's about heads in prayer. Well, I was a little longer than I wanted to be, but praise God. I've enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to sing Away in the Manger. But I wonder, would there be one here this morning that's never been saved? Oh, we'd like for you to come and receive Christ as your Savior. Would you slip up your hand? By this, say, pray for me. Is there one? I'm not a Christian. Please pray for me. Is there one? Is there Christians here this morning? Boy, we have... A troubled world that we live in. Maybe there's Christians that have needs this morning and that you need for God to help them. Would you just slip up your hand? God bless that hand. Mm. All those hands. <laughs> bless each hand, dear. God, we pray. Bless that hand. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you, God, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for this season. Lord, on behalf of Diane and my family, I thank you, God, for this wonderful church. Mm. How they love us and how they love Will and his wife, and dear God, and their family. And we pray, Lord, that our love would always run deep. Bless each one, dear God. Bless those that's sick. Oh, God, this morning we pray for you. Sister Mars. Bless her, pray, sweetheart. Pray for Barbara. And yes. The Armstrong family. And each and every one. God, we pray you give them joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. Have your way in that heart and life. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As we stand in the sing, this is my favorite song, Christmas song. Sing this little song. Away. Yes. Yeah. 
something extra give it to her we always have a lot of folks to buy for us did you enjoy the message this morning right hey, amen let's give him a hand appreciate Raj and the message this morning we have a few announcements and so we'll get those and